Hi, welcome back my steel design friends. In the last couple of videos we've been talking about tension capacities of members. Okay, but in all cases that we were showing you, we had a hole arrangement in which multiple holes occurred in the same plane. Okay, and so net fracture plane was very easy to determine. Okay, but in reality when dealing with plates, sometimes that's not always the case. And so we have to take into account the effect of um, hole stagger. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. I'll show you how to calculate the net area for staggered holes. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so what a staggered hole is, is it's kind of an arrangement of bolts in which, in all of our previous examples that we've talked about, the holes were always on the same plane of the cross section, meaning that I had one bolt directly above another and that these were generally in some sort of rectangular pattern. Okay, this would be our non-staggered situation. Okay, the staggered situation, and this typically occurs in flat plates, um, it doesn't happen very often in I-beams or channels, I guess it could happen in a channel, but in I-beams it doesn't happen very often, but it's a, a, a scenario in which the holes are no longer lined up on the same plane, that one, that one row of bolts is shifted from the one next to it by some amount. Okay, now you can have multiple staggers as we'll show in the example down below, but the dimensions that we want to look at are as follows. The width of the plate we're going to take as WG, that's this dimension. Okay, the spacing between bolts on a line is taken as P, and the space, and assuming that this hole is centered next to, is, um, is centered in the middle of P, we're going to call that dimension as S, or the spacing between adjacent bolts on those. Okay, and so what happens is, is that there's a correction value that, or a potential possible failure mechanism that the net fracture you would assume would be this AB plane. That it goes through the first bolt and jumps across, but if my holes get too big or they get too close together, it's actually possible for this guy to short circuit and jump over to the other hole and include this hole in the failure plane. Okay, and so that's why we've got to make this correction for staggered holes. And the way they do that is they add a correction term um, that accounts for the difference in length of this guy versus what you had happening here. Okay, and so that correction term is in the amount of S squared over 4G. So our net width, which includes uh, the holes, is the gross width minus the sum of all the diameter of the holes that are contained on the plane that you're looking at, plus the sum of all the staggers on the path. Okay, so we have one stagger here, but we have two holes on plane AC that's happening here. Now, obviously, AN on this thing would be then WN multiplied by the thickness of the plate is how we get to our AN value. But for this exercise, we're just going to correct for WN and be able to calculate which one is the controlling factor. The smallest WN will be the one that controls. Okay, so the way that we would look at this then, if I look at plane AB on this, I would take the length of AB without the hole, so in this case that would be my WG parameter, and then I would subtract off one hole, okay, which would be the width of the bolt plus an eighth of an inch. Okay, and so that would be my minus one. Now again, this eighth inch assumes the standard oversize and it assumes, you know, that the hole was punched. You know, if this was a drilled hole or a slotted hole, you would have to correct that value after the end of it. So be very careful on this value. This is that hole correction factor. We're gonna assume punched holes for all of our exercises. Okay, for AC then, if we go look at the path on this, is the correction is, it's the length of AB, it's the width of the plate, this WG, okay, and then I subtract off the number of holes on path AC. Well, there's two holes, okay? Because it's a half a diameter to the center of the hole and then center hole to the edge of the hole is another half a diameter. So that's a full diameter even though it's not straight across, okay? And so I have two of those. So there's two times the width of the bolt, the diameter of the bolt, okay? Plus the eighth inch that we have here, plus now this correction term, this S squared over 4G as we start to kind of look on this one. Okay, all right, now, if we look at this, now let's take a look at kind of an example and kind of put some of this to work and show you a little bit more um, complex problem, okay? So in this particular example, I'm gonna pull on the left end of the display. So we have to figure out what are my planes that could fail, okay? And so for a load coming from the left, the planes would be, you know, potentially I would have a plane that could go through AD, okay? Or I could get a plane that goes from A to B, 
and back to D and down. Now, the way that we determine the planes is we're looking at drawing lines through holes that allow me to completely separate the two pieces such that the bolts are on one side and it's free on the other, okay? So I wouldn't have a plane that goes from A to B and then jumps down because this whole D is still kind of holding things in place. It has to come back as we look. And I clearly wouldn't have an A, B, C for the same reason. Okay, now if I were pulling from the other side of this thing, now I would have a potential plane of C, of CB, and of CBA would all be failure planes if I were pulling from the right. But this example, we're gonna pull from the left. Okay, so, so our cases that we're going to look at are going to be plane in, including AD and a plane that includes A, B, and D. As a, and so we've got all of our dimensions on here. Okay, so the distance from the edge of the plate to A is 2.5. The di dimension from A to B a, vertically in this picture is 2.5. From B to D, we're taking as 4, and from D to 3, or D to the edge is 3 inches. And then our spacings from A to B is 2 and an eighth, and from B to C is 1 and 7 eighths. And this, this is a highly irregular pattern. This is the guy that was drilling the holes got a little sloppy, basically, and mislocated. Uh, didn't, didn't do a, it wasn't detailed right or it wasn't built right or something. This doesn't happen, hopefully, very often. Okay, or if there is, there's a, a legitimate reason why you would want that. But generally speaking, that's not, uh, it's a highly irregular piece. Okay, all right, so let's go through and let's take a look at our paths. Okay, and so if I look at path AD and ABD on here, okay, the path for AD would be then my 12 inches, that's my WG, okay, we had two holes, okay, and that should be, uh, the diameter of the hole is 15 16 plus 1 16th, this is my 7 8 bolt plus an eighth is what that value is, it's the same quantity on this, it's just, we use the whole diameter, it's another way of writing this. Okay, and then the thickness of the plate is a quarter of an inch. So if I do this math, my net width for path AD is 2.5 inches squared. Okay, now for path ABD, this is the one with the stagger. Now I have three holes, so I have 12 inches minus three holes on this, and then I have a stagger for each of the pads. So if you look at my pattern, there's a stagger that goes from here to here, and then there's another one that comes back from here to here. And each one has a different you know, G value on the gauge. So that's why there are two different stagger corrections that have to take place on this guy. Okay, so if I go through and I do that, so the first stagger then we take a dimension of uh, 2.125, that's the S dimension. So S squared over four times its corresponding stagger. So if I look at this, so here's my 2.125 number, that's my S, and then the stagger that goes with that guy is the four, okay? And so, four times, that is, oh, sorry, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the wrong term, okay, so that's this one, four, four times four, there's the four gauge, and then the other one then is, if we look, is a two and an eighth for this guy is the spacing, and a two and a half for my gauge from A to B, and so that's what we have on this term. Okay, so each stagger gets its own correction term. So 2.125 squared over 4 times 2.5 plus 2.125 squared over 4 times 4. Okay, and you can see that that stagger amounts to an area, because of the three holes, an area of 2.43 square inches. And so if I look at this, clearly this is the guy that's going to control. These holes are big enough and close enough together that my failure path is going to occur along here. Oops sorry, is going to occur, this will be my path that controls for pulling from the left. Okay, now, suppose we're pulling from the right on this, you know, just for comparison, it turns out that even though this thing is traveling a whole lot further, we could look at ABC as a path, and I did that just kind of as an exercise, okay, on this, that this guy controls. And at this point, this is where I would stop for a, path, a pull from the left, because ABC can't form on when I'm pulling from the left, right? Because this bolt in D is gonna kind of hold things in place. So this would not be a controlling case here um, on that. So, but I'm just, just for the sake of argument, we're gonna do ABC kind of as a practice run and see if we can figure out our staggers. So now we've got a stagger that goes from here to here. Okay, so we're gonna have one stagger that has a gauge of four and a spacing of 1.875. And then this stagger is the same as before, a gauge of two and a half and a spacing of 2.125, okay. And so if we look at that, that's all we're doing is it's 12 minus, there were three holes again, 15 sixteenths plus 1 16th. 
okay? And then these are the correction terms, just like you would expect. 1.875 squared over four times four plus the original correction term. And this guy actually has an, a value of 2.42. So if I pull from the other side, it's actually weaker that it would pull, you know, if I pulled the load this way, then this would be the piece that controls. And so those are the paths that you're looking for. And so the art of these hole staggers is figuring out which path is the one that controls as we start to kind of look at it. Okay, and so for that, my controlling net area would be, you know, depending on which way you're pulling from, would be either 2.42 or 2.43. And so that's what we've done here. Okay, now, what if there were additional fasteners trying to figure out the paths that we could start to have happening, okay? You know, maybe we look at, you know, if pulling from the left, you know, and I add, you know, now a bolt at C and a bolt at F, what are the paths that we could have? So from the left, it's still ABC and AC, kind of what we outlined here. But from the right, now we got to figure out, well, what are my paths that could happen? Okay. And so the, the planes that we're going to look at then for the net fracture case would then be an AC value happening here, okay, which would be this plane. I have an ABC, which would be this guy. That would allow me to separate the left half. Okay, and then I have to come in and figure out, well, what's going on with these others? Well, F is clearly one of them. Okay, and then I would have a plane that could be E, F, and D uh, would be the case that would separate this. And that would allow me to pull the right half. Again, depending on which way we're looking at um, applying the load. Okay, you could also, I would argue, say, well, maybe I could do a shortcut to E over to F and then this guy comes straight down. That would probably be one worth checking as well. And likewise, I could go from D to F and then shortcut across here and not come back. All those could be potentially be, uh, be our potential planes that we're looking at. So to check this for both sides, both directions, these are the planes that I would check. Okay, A, C, A, B, C, F, E, F, D, E, F, and F, D. Notice all of them involve a perpendicular jump out to the edge here that we're looking at. Okay, so you know the, the question is, is A, B, D a valid plane in this one? this diagonal one that we had and the answer is no because I have these two guys um, you know um, adding on this side and I have C on the other so this plane is not one that would likely be the one to occur for this plane to develop I would have to break a couple of bolts in order to break this thing free and we're just assuming that that's not going to be the case now obviously in calculations you would verify that but for the sake of this exercise that's how we know that ABD isn't to be considered okay so what were the note here is for a failure plane a piece must be able to be completely removed Okay, and so what happens is, is my bolt C restrains the left side and bolts E and F will restrain the right. So A, B, D is not a pattern. It's generally a pattern that goes around the boundary and then has some sort of shortcut possibility that will start to happen. But those are the cases that you check and you would do these calculations exactly the same as what we did up here to determine it. Once you have that, that WN equation figured out, now we can go in and calculate AN and now we can do shear lag coefficient on it. If it's a plate, generally it's 1.0. Okay, and then with that I have my effective area, and with that I can calculate the net fracture capacity, just like we did in the previous videos. So if you've got any questions, go back and take a look at the, the previous net fracture video on shear lag, which was the video right before this one. Um, but otherwise, that's kind of how we accommodate um, staggered holes. So I hope it's made sense to you. As always, if you'd leave us some comments down below, if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise, um, toss us a like or subscribe to the channel and the videos, and we'll keep them coming. So we'll see you guys next time. Happy engineering.